Welcome to layers. Layers are the primary method of organizing the objects in the drawing by function or purpose. Layers can reduce the visual complexity of a drawing and improve display performance by hiding information that you don't need to see at the moment. It is best to create all the needed layers before starting to draw, but you can always add later. So for example, let's locate the layer toolbar in the ribbon. So this is the layer toolbar in the ribbon. It is named as layers. Our current layer now is a default layer of CAD, which is zero. If we're going to do the drop down menu, there we only have zero as layer. To add more layers, you can go to layer properties. You just click this, or for the shortcut, it is LA Enter. When you click that, you are shown the layer properties manager menu. So we can see our current and only layer, which is the default layer of AutoCAD, zero. To add new layer, you just click this one, this icon, or press Alt N. For example, I'm going to type circle. So that's my first layer. To add a new layer, you can either again click this one or press comma. There, so I'm going to do another layer, named it rectangle. And the next layer, triangle. Okay, there I have my three layers then. We have the properties of la the layers here. So you have the on and off, the freeze, and the lock. We will discuss this later. And then you can assign color to each layer. So it is best to use the color scheme that we have created for our plot style, which we discussed the previous exercise. So you just click the color and change it to a certain color. So we can see it here in our properties that these are the colors that we assigned with line weights. So we could use this color to create line weights in our drawing. So for triangle, I'm going to use red. Okay, so it changes into red. For the rectangle, I'm going to use cyan there. Okay. And then for the circle, I'm going to use yellow. Then we have the line type, we'll discuss that later. Then we have the plot. This one is quite important because you could actually have drawings as references, but you don't actually need it in the final output or in the final printout. You could actually assign it a layer and have it non-printable. So to make it non-printable, you just click on the printer icon and you'll notice that there is a no sign or a stop sign here. So it means that this layer, although seen in the drawing, will not be printed in the final output. So I'm just going to reactivate it again there. So I'm done. So I'm just going to close this and check on my layers toolbar if they are already present. So I'm going to do the drop down menu. There we have our three layers that we created earlier. So I'm going to create these shapes, circle, triangle, three sides, inscribe there, and then a rectangle. So to assign them to their specific layer, you just need to select the object and then assign them by clicking on the particular layer so that they will be under that layer there. Next, the triangle there. And next, the rectangle. So when you put it in the layer, it will bear the properties that you have created for that particular layer. Now, Let's go to the on and off, freeze and thaw, and lock and unlock menu in the layer. So first, I'm going to turn on 
or turn off rather the circle. So I'm just going to click on this bulb there. So when the bulb is out, all the layers under the circle layer will be turned off. But this time, be careful with turning on and off because any edit or modify tool you apply here in the workspace and you accidentally include it in the selection, it will be applied to those hidden layers if you are going to use turn on and off. If you don't want your layer to be affected by any modify or editing command, you need to use freeze and thaw. So basically it functions like on and off, but this time your layer will not be affected by any modify or editing command that you enter in the workspace. So there, it disappeared, but it is also uneditable. Lastly, we have the lock. Okay, lock and unlock. This one, if you want an object to still be visible in the workspace, but you don't want it to be edited. So what you do is you lock it. And when you lock the object, you'll notice the color will slightly go darker. There. So with this, it is already locked. You can select, but you cannot edit. Okay, unlock there. So again, as what I told you before, that layers can reduce the visual complexity of a drawing and improve display performance by hiding information that you don't need to see at the moment. For example, I have a full drawing here of an architectural plan and it is already containing all the necessary dimensions, labels, and everything. But when I edit this, this is very chaotic and you might edit some unnecessary objects that needed, need not to be edited. So you can use layer, for example, I have already created my layers here. So I don't want to see all the text and labels. I'm just going to freeze it there. So all text and labels are frozen. And then I'm going to freeze my dimensions. Dimensions. There. Close. Ah, this one. This time, I cannot freeze my dimensions because it is my current layer. So the current layer is basically the layer that appears here. So I need to make this my not current layer. So to do that, you just need to click or double click another layer. There, so my current layer now is zero. Then I can hide or freeze my dimensions layer. There, so it's it's much cleaner. My drawing is much cleaner and I can concentrate on the specific things that I need to edit. In doing architectural drawings, we need to label our layers by parts of the building, such as column, column hatch, dimensions, door and windows, then door and windows character, entourage, floor and stair, floor and stair nosing. So it needs to be a particular part of the building so that when hiding that layer, it will be by parts also. And then you also need to color coordinate. We color coordinate our layers by line weights. And we already know in building tech how we apply line weights in our drawing. So for example, columns, I made it blue because I want it to have a thicker line weight or a thicker line. Of course, the hatches, if I'm going to make it blue, it will not be visible and will just fill out the space that is hatched. So I made it red, meaning it has the thinnest line weight, so on and so forth. So as a guide, I will post this layer color and line weight assignments in Moodle. And that's it.